Good morning. It's my 42nd birthday today, so I'm going to try and make myself feel younger by running some intervals. <laughs> um, try testing out a new shoe that I got today. This again will be my first time wearing a shoe by a brand. I'm wearing the Under Armour Velocity Elite. So this is Under Armour's uh, attempt at a super shoe. Uh, I've worn these once so far. This will be my second run in them. Initially, I was impressed with the softness of the flow foam. I, I assumed that that was gonna be firmer than it is. So these have a dual density midsole. They have the uh, Apiba based foam on top, the carbon plate, and then Under Armour's flow foam that they use in some of their other shoes on the bottom. So these don't have an outsole. That's basically a ground contact foam on the bottom. So they feel very smooth. Um, they don't feel like they have a very aggressive drop. The plate in these is also not that aggressive. If you, you wouldn't know that it's a plated shoe. I feel like in this shoe, the plate is giving stability to the foam, but it's not giving you a lot of explosiveness. In the run that I did yesterday, these were feeling very smooth, more bouncy than I thought they would be. That, that flow foam is a little softer, a little bouncier than I was expecting. Um, it felt very natural, but it's kind of reminding me more of the Puma uh, DV8 Elite, um, where it's a, I'd, I'd say it's kind of like a B tier super shoe, where, you know, there's the top tier shoes that are giving you all that explosiveness, that speed assistance. I feel like this one is like a really good uh, tempo trainer. Um, I have to really put it through the paces more to make a final decision on how I feel about it but it is a very natural shoe. Um, it's light, but not the lightest. I'll get the exact weight on this. Um, the upper is very perforated, uh, very breathable shoe. I've seen some other reviews where they were talking about, you know, this shoe's not worth the price, uh, but as usual, I did not pay full price for these. The reason why these are on my feet today, uh, Under Armour had a sale recently. Uh, these are a $250 shoe. Uh, they were on sale for 187 plus an additional 50% off. So they were actually $93. So I was able to get these for under $100. So a, a carbon plate super shoe for under $100. I'm willing to give that a try. So warm up done, and I have to say, these really are a super comfortable shoe. Uh, I like the fit of this upper. Uh, I'm getting a good lockdown. They feel smooth, very smooth and bouncy, not incredibly bouncy, but they're kind of reminding me, I feel like this is like almost like the Takumi Sen with a carbon plate in it. So it's like a little bit stiffer. Now really for the next part of this test, I actually wanna, this is really reminding me of the Takumi Sen and the uh, Puma DV8 Elite. So I really wanna run in those three shoes back to back to see really where it slots in there. But this foam is feeling like the Adidas foam, like Light Strike Pro, where it has kind of that racquetball type consistency where it's kind of a shallow bounce back. So it's a, a little bit more dense foam that I'm pushing into, but it's recovering quickly, not giving me a super soft bouncy ride, but giving more of a direct ride. Uh, this to me, again, feels more like a tempo shoe, like something I would use for shorter distances. Not sure if I would take this for a marathon. I have to see, uh, do a longer run in these and see how they they do over like a 10 mile run or something like that. So I just did 10 intervals of one minute going hard with minute recovery in between. And uh, this shoe does definitely feel faster uh, when you turn up the pace. Uh, the bounce becomes less pronounced. Like when I'm walking here, it feels very bouncy in the heel. Uh, but once you start running, it has more of that Light Strike Pro racquetball type feeling where it's really not sinking in that much it's squishing in a little bit and giving you like immediate energy return so it's really encouraging you to uh, pick up your cadence be light on your feet 
and move on to your next stride. Now, as I mentioned though, this plate is really not that stiff. So before I finish this video, I thought I'd actually compare the shoes I was talking about here. So right now I'm wearing the Puma DV8 Elite V1 and the Under Armour Velocity Elite. Look at the difference in how these shoes look. You can see how narrow the upper is on the Puma, how much more volume there is on the Under Armour. It really looks like a much bigger shoe. So I'm gonna run a little bit in both and see how they uh, compare on the same, running with them at the same time. Then I'm gonna run in each shoe uh, and just see how they feel. First impression is these feel almost exactly the same, the foam and the plate, kind of like what I thought when I tried the Under Armour, but the Puma has a much tighter fit and it's a little bit lighter shoe. So let me uh, continue with this test. So I'm not going all out in these three shoes right now. I'm trying to just do kind of like a tempo mile just to see how they feel compared to each other. I think I ran like just under seven minutes in the DV8 Elite. And that shoe remains exactly the way I remember it. Super tight fitting upper, very light shoe, but again, very little assistance. The, you really don't feel that that shoe has a plate in it. The foam is not incredibly bouncy. So it's kind of just like a modern racing flat that lets you have high turnover, move your feet quickly, but it's really not that assistive or that bouncy. So again, I see that as being more of a short distance shoe. I wouldn't want to take it for a marathon. I'd want a little bit more support, a little bit more bounce uh, for that long of an effort. Now, immediately putting on the Under Armour shoes, I can feel how much looser the upper is. In the toe box, there's a lot more volume. I got a 12 and a half in these. I probably could have gotten a 12. I have pretty much an entire thumb between my big toe and the front of the shoe, but it's a little late for that. Can't really exchange them now. Uh, but also, I don't know if a 12, my toe would kind of be right up against the tip, but there's definitely more volume in the upper here. So we'll see how this mile feels compared to the Puma. So interestingly, I just ran that second mile about 36 seconds faster, which is pretty substantial. Although what really happened there was the first mile, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna take it a little easy in this shoe, do a little bit faster than normal pace, but just kind of go, it feels comfortable with the shoe. But that one, it really doesn't give you much assistance. So it wasn't encouraging me to run any faster than the pace I was going. Immediately once I started running in these, I was feeling a lot more energy return than the Puma shoe. There's a lot more bounce in these than there is in the Puma. And that kind of bounding sensation was taking me off my heels more to my forefoot and kind of rewarding me for putting a little bit more effort into the shoe. And then it was pushing off and bouncing and feeling really good. And it just made me want to continue to do that. So it kind of, the shoe kind of encouraged me to run faster than I was intending, which is kind of the point of this type of shoe. So uh, that was actually surprising to me. These are heavier than the Puma shoe. I was expecting them to feel softer, like I would sink in more, wouldn't be as fast. But actually with the, the bounce that these have, the energy return actually resulted in me running faster than in the Puma. Uh, I still think I'd have a faster top speed in the Puma. It's a lighter shoe. You can do a quicker cadence, kind of pick up your feet, but you're doing all the work in that shoe. It's a very natural, smooth shoe, but you're doing all the work, what you put into it, you're getting out of it. Whereas this one actually has a nice kind of shallow bounce to it. It's not super bouncy, but once you get it rolling, it just kind of keeps going. So that mile actually felt really good in these. So now we'll see what happens with the Takumi Sen 8. Now that's the in between the weight of these two. The Puma's the lightest, this is the heaviest. That one I thought in the past though, felt kind of similar to this, the spring I was getting from the foam. However, on this run, I'm really feeling these are more springy than I remember the Takumi Sen being. Now that's gonna be lighter, has a, has a tighter fit that I like. So we'll see how this next mile feels. So the last one I'm gonna run in today is the Adidas Takumi Sen 8. I actually haven't worn these in a while. And again, this is another one with the tight fitting upper. They do run a little bit long. I find Adidas shoes tend to run a little bit long. I'm always good with a 12 in them instead of a 12 and a half. And even in a 12, I do have a little bit of room in the front, but that's kind of the fit I'm looking for. Uh, this shoe also gets pretty narrow in the midfoot and heel. Uh, it's a lower drop and lower um, stack height than both of the other shoes. This one's really not designed for longer distances. This is more of a, a 5K, 10K tempo, speedy shoe, not really designed for marathon miles, uh, but it does very well at running one mile. So let's see how we do today.
Okay, I think I just shaved another 16 seconds off my last time. So this has become a progression run, uh, which wasn't my intent, but just uh, the way that those second two sh shoes feel was just encouraging me to turn it up. And if I have to run, run, well, run one mile to save my life between these three shoes, it's the Takumi sign all day. I mean, these are so fast. I love this shoe. I need to take these out for a, uh, a nice session sometime soon. So fast, so nice, so light. Nice tight fit. This also has that shallow kind of bounce to it where it gives you some energy return, but it's not in your face. It's just like compressing just enough to bounce you to your next step without being too squishy. When I previously ran in the Under Armour shoe, I thought it was reminding me of Light Strike Pro, but now having run in the Takumi Sen right after that, Light Strike Pro is still better. Um, I feel like that flow foam is softer than Light Strike Pro. It actually compresses a little bit more, gives me a little bit more bounce. But when I'm just trying to run fast, this shoe just has such quick turnover and pop. It just feels fantastic. It just makes you want to run fast, which is what I just did. So it's funny because when I ran in that Under Armour shoe, it made me think of these two shoes, but it's very different than both of these shoes. I would say actually ranking the three, I'd probably rank the Puma shoe last of the three. Um, I would say if you wanted to run longer miles or slower paces, the Under Armour shoe is going to do that the best. It gives you the most energy return. It's a little bit more stable than the Puma shoe. So I feel like if I was going to run like a half marathon or a long run, I would prefer the uh, Under Armour shoe over the Puma because it gives you a little bit more bounce, a little bit more energy return. But if I was running like a 10K, a 5K or anything on the track, the Takumi Sen just destroys both of them which is pretty impressive for the price that it is. Um, these are the Takumi Sen 8. I actually have two pairs of these. I didn't get the 9 because it was basically the 8 uh, with a 9 on the side. I know they changed a little bit for the Takumi Sen 10, but I've got a lot of miles left to put in these 8, so I'm probably not going to be running in the 10 anytime soon. But if you find the 8 or the 9 on sale, this is still probably my favorite tempo shoe of all time. It's so great for these fast, uh, speedy sessions. So the Under Armour Flow Velocity Elite. I guess I kind of proved that I might think something feels a certain way, but it kind of makes the most sense to try on the shoes that you were comparing it to right afterwards to see how they really compare. Uh, what I will say about this shoe is uh, it's a very comfortable shoe. I really like the look of it. I think this is a really good looking shoe. That's not super important to me. I care more about how it performs than how it looks, but it's also nice to have a good looking shoe. This has some interesting colorways where it kind of fades from one color to another. Um, I like the dual density midsole that works well in this shoe as well It has that Piba foam up top and the flow foam at the bottom again There's no outsole because it just has this EVA based ground contact uh, foam as the outsole which results in having a really smooth ride really smooth transitions uh, This shoe is also pretty flexible as far as a carbon shoe goes. It's not a super stiff carbon plate So it's a very comfortable carbon plated shoe if this is if someone's never run in a carbon shoe before I would say this would be a good one to start with to kind of get that feeling without it being too uh, too stiff or too intense for you. The upper is very breathable. The tongue is padded as well. It's not gusseted, but I didn't have any experience with moving around while I was running. It stays in place very well. Uh, there is a solid sturdy kind of heel collar here, so there is support in the heel. Um, it does get kind of narrow in the midfoot and heel, but overall it still feels like a very solid, uh, stable shoe overall. Definitely more stable than the Puma shoe. So did Under Armour make a $250 super shoe to rival all these heavy hitters behind me? No, they did not. <laughs> um, is it a good shoe still? Yes. Is it worth $250? Definitely not. I think they set the bar way too high with that price point, you know, making it up there with the uh, Saucony uh, Endorphin Pro, uh, Nike Vaporfly, uh, Adios Pro 3, uh, Hoka Rocket X2. Uh, it's, it's not in the conversation with those shoes. What I think this shoe really competes more directly is these guys. Uh, you know, some of the best of the daily trainers that are plated that also give you that speed and responsiveness that you can take for uh, tempo sessions, faster runs, uh, the Saucony Endorphin Speed, uh, the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. Uh, if this shoe was $170 or $160, I would have it compared right with these two and being, you know, in the same league as them. It feels faster than the Speed. It's lighter than the Puma. 
Uh, if it was in the same price point as those, that would be a real competitor uh, to these two shoes. Uh, I was able to get it for $93. So for $93, this I would say is a better shoe than those two. Um, this one's going to be more durable overall. It has that great Puma Grip outsole. It's going to last a very long time, but it's a lot heavier uh, than the Under Armour shoe is. But I actually will put up on the screen now. I just uh, did a quick little spreadsheet where I put in the weights of all these shoes as well as the size. Uh, some shoes I'm a 12 in, some I'm a 12 and a half. Um, and then the stack height in the heel, the forefoot, and the drop of the shoe. And looking at that list here, it's interesting to see this is kind of up towards the higher end of all the shoes on that list there. Uh, the Puma Deviate Nitro 2 is the heaviest one at 10.44 ounces. Uh, then the Saucony Speed 3 is 9.47, and this shoe comes in at 9.29. So under 10 ounces is not a heavy shoe in my size, but you look at how many shoes are ahead of it there. Uh, it's heavier than the Adios Pro 3, the Rocket X2, the Endorphin Elite, uh, the Brooks Hyperion Max, the Vaporfly, Takumi Sen, Puma Deviate Elite, all those shoes are lighter than this one. So, you know, is it a $250 super shoe? No. Is it a very good tempo shoe, a super comfortable shoe? Is it going to be pretty durable? Am I going to put a lot of miles in it, run faster paces, long runs? Is it going to do all those things for me? Yes. Would I race in it? No. It's kind of right in the middle of all these shoes. I have lighter, faster shoes for shorter races, and then I have shoes that have higher stacks, like the uh, Endorphin Elite, the Adios Pro 3, that are better for longer races. They give you more energy return. There's more stack there. Uh, they're just gonna be better for a marathon than that shoe would be. And then I have lighter shoes that I can run faster in a 5K or a 10K. So it kind of slots itself right in the middle where it's not really the best at any of those things. So again, it's a good shoe, it's just not the best at being a short distance shoe or a long distance shoe. So it's very good overall, but it is not worth the money that they're asking for that shoe. Now I did recently see on Under Armour's website that they've come out with the second version of this shoe, uh, the Flow Velocity Elite 2. Uh, take a picture, take a look at that picture of it right there. Uh, it is a pretty cool looking shoe. Looks like they did increase the stack height. So this one was only 36 in the heel where the legal max is 40. So a lot of shoes go up to that 38 uh, close to 39 and a half. So it looks like Under Armour did increase it. I don't I don't see the specs of this shoe anywhere yet, but you can definitely see too the Peeba layer looks like it's much thicker than it was in the other shoe. So I'm uh, guessing that's going to give it a lot more rebound and bounce. It also has more of an aggressive toe spring uh, than this shoe does. This one's pretty low to the ground. It doesn't have a super aggressive toe spring. So it looks like they kept that really thin lattice type upper added some more Piba foam and potentially made the stack higher. I'm assuming assuming that also made the shoe heavier as well. So that's one that is, I've never seen any reviews of that though. And I'm definitely not gonna go out and spend $250 on that one uh, where this one is definitely not worth the 250. It looks like they may have improved it. Uh, it also looks like they have a cutout in the bottom there now, uh, probably to reduce weight. So in summary, the price I got this shoe for, it's phenomenal. Uh, it's for less than $100, great shoe. Uh, I'm gonna use this for speedy runs, for longer runs. I'm gonna test it out, you know, half marathon distance and see how it does. Uh, again, it has that uh, little bit of responsive bounce, but it's just really not that stiff. It's not that propulsive. So it doesn't feel like a $250 super shoe. If this, if again, if Under Armour rebranded it, and made it less expensive, then I think it would be in the category of those very good tempo shoes and trainers, um, but it is not at the level of Saucony, Nike, Adidas, you know, as far as commanding over $250 for a top tier super shoe. That's all I have for today. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.